welcome back for another day where we can receive of the Word of God. Uh, glad to have you back. So let's just go through this week. I've got a part one, which is the two great mysteries that I want to share with you uh, from the Bible, which are mentioned in the New Testament. So this is something you're interested in. Please stick around. This is very powerful. I want, I invite you to stick around. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and then we're going to get started. All right. Our gracious God, Lord, we just thank you for this time together. We do thank you for being able to have the ability to come together and to worship you and to learn of you and to read your word. Lord, we just thank you right now. We bind and shackle every work of the enemy that would come against your word. And in the name of Jesus, we bind and shackle the strong man spirit as well as unclean spirits that would be operating under those that are listening right now. And in the name of Jesus, loose your spirit upon them. It's all in your precious and the most holy name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. So today I want to talk about the two great mysteries. I'm going to share with you the two great mysteries that are mentioned in the Bible, in the New Testament. There's two, two that are, and they interrelate with each other. So the first one is in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 31, 32. This is talking about marriage. And it says that, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall become one flesh. This is a, what kind of mystery? A great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. All right, so let's take a look at the next mystery. In 1 Timothy 3.16, this other mentioning of a great mystery is in 1 Timothy 3.16. And without controversy, without arguing, Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. So I'm going to be working through this. It may be a little bit lengthy, but hey, listen, I, I guarantee it's worth the wait. So Let's go to the Lord here and start looking in this word. And Lord, we just ask right now, just, just reveal your word to us, Lord, so that we can understand because this mystery, Lord, you've said in your word, it was something that was hidden. That's what a mystery is. But a mystery shouldn't always be a mystery. And obviously there was a time when you let the secret out. So we got to get started and we'll be dealing with the first one, which was in, in uh, Ephesians 5 there about the husband and wife coming together and becoming one flesh. So where do we start? Well, obviously we've got to start in Genesis. Uh, so let's take a look here. It says, And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. All right, so all these things that were being made, guess what? They were being made... And it, we'll see later on. They were being made from the dirt, from the ground. They were. He just He spoke these things, but everything was of the earth. God said, let us make man in our image after our what? Likeness. So man was going to be made like God, but he wasn't God. So the image that was going to come would be like God. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So he was going to give them dominion. Now, let me ask a question. Does God have dominion? Yes. He has ultimate power, control, and everything over all things. What's interesting here is man is being made in his likeness, and then in addition, he's giving him a dominion and power and so forth. So look, in verse 27, And so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. What? Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Now, notice he said he created he them. How many of them showed up? How many showed up? Once, we'll see here. Let's, let's keep going. I want you to see what I mean by this. Because he created he them, male and female. Watch this. Uh, and the Lord God formed the man of the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So watch this. The Lord God said then, so how many showed up? He breathes into this, this dust man, so he gives him life through breathing. 
And so then guess what? So it's only one in the garden right now. But there's there's one more inside of Adam that just hasn't been brought out yet. And this is part of the mystery. So stay with me here. And the Lord God said, it's not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. So what was she going to be? Someone to help him. Look at this. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field, every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. So God gave him power. He gave him power to be able to name. So he's naming these creatures that are being made from what? Every beast of the field that was brought unto him. He made them from the ground. Out of the ground, God made all these animals. And Adam gave names to all cattle, to the fowl of the air, to every beast of the field. But Adam that was not found an helpmeet for him. Notice he couldn't find a helpmeet for him that God could just, could just create from the dirt. He couldn't just bring him another object. And also notice this. There was already this life-giving breath inside of Adam, which was the image. He was made in the likeness of God's image. And he created he them. So there was already something formed inside of Adam. Look at this. I'll scroll this up here a little bit. Let me go here. And the Lord God, look, so verse 21, the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs, closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Now I want you to see this. Notice where did he go to get this 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 piece from Adam to make uh, the woman from his side. When Christ was on the cross, where was he pierced? In his side. When he was pierced in his side, what came forth? Blood and water. Because there's this other picture about being born again. Now notice God did not go back to the dirt and just form woman from the dirt. Instead, he went. This was something very intimate. Notice that this was coming from his chest. This is coming from his bosom. This is from the bosom of Adam. And what was going to take place? There was going to be a rib that was removed from Adam. And God would now take, because he's already breathed life into Adam. And he's already created he, them, male and female. So he's pulling this rib out. And then what does he do? And so the rib which the Lord God had taken from him made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And, and Adam said, verse 23, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his wife and they shall become or be one flesh. Notice this is one of the great mysteries that it talked about of Christ in the church earlier, how that the two, a man would leave his husband, I mean, his, his, a man would leave his father and mother, and so would a woman, and the two of them would come together and become one flesh. Watch this. And they were both naked, and the man and his wife were not ashamed. So we got to keep going here. I've got a lot of scripture here. So, all right. In Romans 16, verse 25 through 27, look at this, because we're going to start looking now at this mystery. It says, now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel. Notice this is the gospel he's saying we can do this with. And the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret. When? Since the world began. So when all of this was happening in the garden, there was a secret that was forming but then was kept secret. Wasn't revealed. Look at this. But now, when? Now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to just the Jews. No, to all nations for the obedience of faith to God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. All right. So what was it? This mystery was kept a secret. When? From the very beginning. Since the world began. So there was a secret that was taking place in the garden. See, I bet you didn't know that, did you? So watch it. We're going to keep going. All right. All right. And then uh, I want you to see, it, it was by the gospel that they would, this is Romans 1. We'll start in verse 16. It was by this gospel. So now this is why this gospel, which is the good news, it's tied in with this secret. Look at this. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto what? Salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now, 
What do, what are we needing salvation from? Well, it's due to sin, and we all go back to the garden, and we look. Mankind had sinned, sin entered the world, and so did death. Death came with it. The penalty of sin was death. So the death sentence was pronounced. But how did they get out of the death sentence? Well, remember, God clothed them. He made into them coats of skin because they covered themselves with leaves. But God made for them coats of skin. And guess what? And you get coats of skin from where? An animal. So there was some innocent animal that was dead, was killed. And then he had to take the skin, excuse me, of those animals, and he clothed Adam and Eve. We don't know what animal it was. That's beside the point. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission or forgiveness of sin. So in this case, God was already setting forth the point of what was going to take place. And guess what? This is all part of the mystery. Look at this. All right. Um, Verse 17, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. How is it that what's known of God is manifest in us? Because we're made in his likeness. We're not God. But guess what? He was going to come. So we're made in his life. So we're holding the truth of what? In unrighteousness. How is it that we're in unrighteousness? Because we are trapped in sin. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God hath showed it unto them. So wait a minute. Stop and think about it. I am in the image of God. I'm in his likeness. How many beings am I? Well, I'm just one. How many gods are there? Just one. Jesus would be Emmanuel, God with us. And so this is part of this mystery. Watch this. Um, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. How many beings am I? I'm just one. Look, God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. So I know a lot of people start talking about the God. You can't understand it. It's too hard. It's tricky. Not what this verse says here. It says that the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So what happened in the garden? God said he created he, them, male and female. But God is, a, is considered a male being. So there's something else deeper here. And I'm going to tell you what that is. It's just like Adam, Eve was in him. But guess what? She had to be brought out and then made and formed and brought back to him because they would become one flesh. She would, become from, she would come from his rib bone. And guess what? God didn't go back to the dirt and form her, but he used that substance of the first Adam. This is very important to understand what this great mystery is. See, this is what so many people and, and pro people have problems with is that God, especially in certain religions, they'll say, well, God, there's no reason. Why would God need to be a, hu a human being? Well, I tell you, he wasn't a human being. He was the word of God that was made flesh. See, a human being cannot save you. A human being cannot pay the price of sin. It can't. I mean, there was never been an approved human sacrifice by God. Instead, no, what did he use? He used animals. And we're going to see here in a little bit some things here, but I want you to pay attention to this. God did not come and become this human being. God came, guess what? It says he came in the likeness of sinful flesh. Why was he in the likeness of sinful flesh? Well, because man was made in his likeness. Now, the likeness that he made Adam in, now it's the real deal. It's the real McCoy. It's the genuine. It is the word of God. This is why the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Because we're going to see here in a little bit that Jesus is the glory of God. So that image that was coming, we've all felt fallen short of it because of sin. Did Jesus have sin? No. He said, can somebody here prove that I've committed sin? No, no one was able to. All right. So the Godhead is easily understood by the things that were made. Well, guess what? When Adam was made, 
how many how many gods were there how many how many individuals it was just one it was adam but there was something also made inside of him this is why you have to understand we were inside of god this is what we'll look at about predestination god we were in him from the beginning of the world i know it sounds a little deep but all right we're going to get to it all right look in verse 21 he said that they would be without excuse. Look at this, verse 21. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Look at this. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Well, why did, why did they become fools? Look at this. And changed the glory. Now, we're going to see in a little bit that the word of God was made flesh. We saw the glory of God. Look at this. Changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man what is man able to be man is able to be corrupt man is corruptible and to birds four-footed bees creeping things wherefore god gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of god jesus said i am the way the truth and the life not the lie look at this who changed the truth of god why his word is truth what did he say in john 17 17 he said sanctify them uh, by thy truth, thy word is truth. See, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Look, who changed the truth of God. You people have changed the word of God that was made flesh and they've turned it to a lie. And look what they do and worship and serve the creature. They're worshiping humanity more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. All right, stay with me. Stay with me. I know this is deep. Let's go to John 1 here. So look in John 1. In the beginning... So keep this in mind. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. Because remember, they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the cool of the garden. That's the voice. That's the Word. They heard the Word of God. Now watch this. That was The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Who? The Word. What was walking in the garden? It was the voice of the Lord God. Look at this. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything that was made. So what is this? It was his word. In him, so in this, this being, this spirit being, was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended at night. So now you have to look too. There's this mystery behind the creation, how God had to separate the, the greater light from the lesser light. There was darkness. There was light. All of this stuff. Look at this. And so we get in here, we're going to skip through. John was sin of God to bear witness of the light. He was, oops, excuse me. Let me rearrange this here. He wasn't the light. There we go. Let me get back over here. But the true light would be what? Jesus. Now look, I want you to see, and then look in verse 9, that was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. So he was coming to shed light. Look, sometimes in a mystery, things are dark. It's, you can't see. He's coming to do what? He's bringing some enlightenment. Look at this, verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. Made by what? The word of God. He made everything by his word. Look at this. It was made by him, and the world knew him not. Now, the word of God is being made flesh. Watch. He came unto his own. Who did? God came unto his own. His own what? His own creation, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Now, wait a minute. His name was going to be kept secret. So now there's something attached with this name. Not Emmanuel. Emmanuel was just telling us that he would be God with us. Look, which, so he said, but as many as received him, gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were not, which, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Why is this? Because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Now look at this. You wouldn't be born of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but God. Why is it we're dealing with the blood, the flesh, and the will? Because guess what? None of those things on this earth are able to save you. There's no man, there's no blood from a man, and no will of a man. You can't just will yourself into heaven. But you had to be born of who? God, you would be born again. Why are we needing Jesus? Because Adam, everybody came, that's on this earth today, came through Adam and Eve. There was this final production of God in which he came, and we're going to be finishing that up on next week. So come back, but let's keep a look here. All right, look, and the word, and the word, 
It didn't say, look, and the word was made flesh. It doesn't say, and the word was made a human being. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. It lived among us. Why? Emmanuel, God with us. And we beheld his glory. Remember, they changed the glory of God, the truth of God for a lie. What is this, the glory? Remember, it said in, in Romans 3, it said that, that uh, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Remember in the garden how that God said, let us make man in our image and our likeness. But they weren't made in this image because this image was what was coming. This image was the word that would be made flesh and would dwell among us. We'll see this here in a little bit. Watch this. Uh, the word was made flesh, dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Look what he was full of. Grace and truth. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. We would be, you're saved by grace through faith. Look, so Jesus is the grace. He's full of grace and truth. So look at this. All right, look, John bare witness of him and cried, saying, this was he of whom I spake that cometh after me. is preferred before me. He was before me. All right, and his then fullness we have all received in grace for grace, for the law was given by Moses. Moses gave the law because God gave Moses the law, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man had seen, now watch this, very powerful here. No man had seen God at any time. The only begotten son, which is in the bosom, in the bosom, in the bosom of the father, he had declared him. All right, I want you to think about this. It says, the only begotten son, which is, in the bosom of the Father. Remember, God is a spirit. But what is bosom? Open arms, the chest. This is where the heart is. This is where these things. Guess what? That's a term of endearment. It's a term of love. Do you realize that Jesus, this incarnation of God as flesh, was the love of God being expressed to us? He came from the bosom of the Father, and he had declared him. What did he say in John 14? He said, why are you asking me about the Father? If you've seen me, you've seen who? You've seen the Father. So you've seen this spirit, but this spirit had finally been. That was what the other mystery was in 1 Timothy 3.16. For without, contra, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. What does this mean? This is what we're talking about. <coughs> All right, stay with me. Stay with me. All right. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I want to just look here at verse 1. He said, And I, brethren, when I came to you, this is Paul talking, came not with excellency of speech, or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Why? Why is that why is that pretty profound? He said he didn't come with fancy words and this and that. See, sometimes we get caught up in people that are become pulpiteers and the Greek word logos. And this, you know what? That's just how they spoke back then. They they said logos. That was their that was they there was Greek that was back then, Aramaic, there was these these languages here. So listen, he said, I didn't know anything to you, anything but Jesus Christ and him crucified. Why was this important? Because I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Why? Because it's the power of God. This was the power of God because God had come in the flesh. He was crucified. And look at this, verse 3, And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling, and my speech and my preaching not with enticing words of man's wisdom but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Let me tell you something. That's exactly what is needed today. Not the words of man's wisdom, but with what demonstration of the spirit and of power. People have sold out now and said, well, you know, those are the miracles of God. And we just, you know, it's a great miracle. And yeah, but let me tell you what, let me tell you what shuts up people is when God supernaturally shows off. Just like in Elijah's day, when he had to show down with those other prophets, he said, whichever God answers by fire. Hallelujah. I, I'm believing that God is calling for that again today. Hallelujah. Who, he's looking. Who's out there that's faithful? Who's out there that believes that I can do all things? Hallelujah. All right, look at this. Verse 6. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, not man-made wisdom, nor of, of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak, look at this, the wisdom of God in a what? Mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Now, wait a minute. All of us 
have fallen short of the glory of God. He's speaking to the church here. Look at this. He speaks the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Why is he saying it's our glory? Because the two would become what? One flesh. We would share in the glory of the word of God. Hallelujah. Look at this. Which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. See, Satan, they... This world, I'm, I'm not talking about Pilate and him. No, the enemy, Satan, the, the, the princes of darkness, they would have never cured, uh, killed Jesus if they really knew who he was. No one had ever seen God. This is why the other mystery is very important. It says, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. He hadn't been, he was seen of angels. What ain't that includes bad angels? Look, they seen him, but they they would have never crucified him if they knew who he was. Look, but it is written, I have not seen or ear, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. How many of you know, hallelujah? This is some deep things of God. Hallelujah. All right, let me get back over here. Let's keep going. All right, in Ephesians 1, look at this, verses 1 through 14. I know I'm going a little fast, but I don't want to keep you long. And it, guess what? This is good. This is good food right here. Look, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God to the saints which were at Ephesus, to the faithful in Christ Jesus. The faithful where? In Christ Jesus. Remember, the two become one. This is why baptism is all about being put in the name of Jesus. Once you've died, you're put, you're, you're baptized your, this body is cut away, and then guess what? You're being clothed. The Word of God is wrapping around you. It's that covering that was needed in the garden. When Adam and Eve sinned, there was bloodshed, and then guess what? That's why when, when John saw Jesus, he said, Behold the Lamb of God that what? Takes away the sin of the world. He was going to do it. There was no man that could do it. There was no beast that could do what God was going to do with his own blood and his own flesh and his own spirit. Hallelujah. All right, look, verse 2. Grace be to you and peace from God, our Father, from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, where? In Christ. You got to beware for the blessings in Christ. Look at this. According as he, had, watch this, this is powerful. According as he hath chosen us, where? In him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world. So that means even before the world was created, he chose us in him. We hadn't even been created. He chose us in him. When he said, let us make man in our image, how many showed up? One. And then what did he do? He had to take a rib from Adam's side and bring it out. Guess what? We are his beloved. Those that he already knew that would be willing to obey and hear the message of God. So when he said, let us, he's not talking to a multiplicity of gods. He was talking, let us make man in our image. Who is he referring to? Himself and his bride. He is foretelling this. Look at this. According as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. When he created Adam, he created he them. Male and female, where were we at? We were in him. And guess what? Humanity was being made in the likeness of God. Let us make man. And he made them like, in the likeness of his image. Look at this. All right, watch this. That we should be holy, according as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be, should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ himself, according to the what? Gospel, I mean, I'm sorry, according to the good pleasure of his will, to praise, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted, where? In the beloved, in the beloved. This is, this is, this is now references to stuff like Song of Solomon, my beloved, this and that. We're made accepted in the beloved. In him, he's our beloved. In Songs of Solomon, it talks about my beloved and this and that. It was a love. It was all these love letters and things about the beloved, the church. He's our beloved. Look at this. In whom we have redemption through his what? Blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us all in wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed, where? 
in himself. That in the dispensation, watch this, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in heaven. Him. This is why all the blessings are in Jesus. Look at this. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. In whom ye also trusted after that you heard the word of truth. The gospel of your salvation in whom also after that ye believed were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Here we go. Now Noah, everybody got in the boat. See, once everybody gets in Jesus, see that boat had pitch. That pitch stands for seal. Notice once you're in Christ, you're sealed, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. All right, stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Hallelujah. Look at this, Ephesians 3. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. If you've heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. So he's got this mystery in Christ. Where did he get it from? He got it from God. Look at this. Which in other ages... Remember, this was hid from the beginning. Look at this. Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, and it is now revealed unto us his whole, unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit of God. I'm going to show you where this takes place. Watch this. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body. Ah, here he goes. Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body. What body? The word that was made flesh. Look at this. And partakers of his promise. Where? In Christ. How? By the gospel. Wherefore, I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is the grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. And to make all men see, watch this, what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath he hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ? So this is, listen, Jesus Christ is the word. The voice of the Lord God was walking in the cool. This is what he made the whole world in this fellowship of the mystery. What fellowship? It's how this mystery, this fellowship is how, how things can come together. This fellowship is the fact that God had already declared the end from the beginning. He's in the garden and he's there. He's created everything. But even before the beginning of the garden being created, we were already in him. This is the fellowship of the mystery <laughs> to the intent that now unto the principalities and power watch this to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God he's given us this power we're able to be seen we are the, the church the manifold wisdom of God what is the wisdom of God that he was going to come in the flesh he was going to pay for this sin and then we would be his helpmate Hallelujah. Look at this. According to the eternal purpose, which he purposed where? In Christ Jesus, our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence uh, by the faith of him. Notice it says we have confidence by the faith of him. We Once we have faith to get into him, we have access to his faith. Hallelujah. All right, let's go. I want to keep going. I, there's a lot here, but let's keep going. All right. Look at this in Ephesians 5. We're going to get back to this mystery now, okay? Staying with me. I hope you're getting something out of this. If so, please share this with somebody. People need to hear this message. All right. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. What did he give? Everything. Everything. He gave his life. He died. Now, why did he do it? Look, verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. By the what? The word? Here we go again. The word. He said in John 17, 17, sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. The word had to be made flesh and blood so that it could take the payment of sin so that guess what? His beloved could be brought to him, piercing him in his side, his beloved could be brought to him but the payment for sin would have been taken place. And guess what? We would become a new creation and a new creature 
and, and you'll see this. We're going to be what? Bone of his bone and flesh will be flesh and bone of him. Look at this. He might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own body. He loveth, he that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones. Look at this. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. This is a great mystery. What kind of mystery? Great mystery. All right, let's go to our last passage here, okay? And we're going to finish up for today. All right, Luke 24. This is after Jesus had rose from the dead. This is the last chapter in Luke. Look at this. And they were talking. They told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them and breaking of bread. There was something about how he broke bread that it just, it did something to him. Look, and as they spoke, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and they saith unto them, peace be unto you. But they were affrighted and supposed that they had seen a what? Spirit. God was a spirit, but watch this. And he said unto them, why are you troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your heart? See, this is where thoughts come from. You think it's here. Why do thoughts arise in your hearts? This is connected with this. Watch this. And he says, behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see. Listen at this. For a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. What were we going to be? What did Adam say? This is now flesh of my flesh and bone of my bones. Do you see this here? Do you see the fact that Jesus is saying, because guess what? And he doesn't mention his blood. Where's his blood? His blood was poured out for what? Your atonement and mine, because guess what? Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. And he says, look, touch and see, handle me. Look, spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet, and ye believed not for joy and wondered and said unto them, have you here any meat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of a honeycomb, and he took it and he did eat before them. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be what? fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms, what? Concerning me. Why? He's the word of God made flesh. Look at this. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Now question for you in verse 45 here. He then, then he opened, then opened he their understanding. What was it before this? Closed. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. That means they didn't understand the scriptures. So he had to open this. Why? The mystery was being, but now the mystery was being made manifest. What was the mystery? Well, I'm about to show you. Watch this. And he said unto them, thus it is written, thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And look at this. Repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. Isn't that interesting? In Acts 2, um, and 37, 38, where it talks about that when Peter starts preaching to him because they're pricked in their heart, they said, men and brother, what shall we do? And he says, and he told them all, he says, repent, every one of you, and says what? And be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Let me see here. Repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And that's where it began. Isn't this amazing? Isn't this amazing? Look. I hope you're getting something out of this. I want you to come back next Sunday. We're going to have this next Sunday, and we'll see if we can't wrap it up, Lord willing. God bless you. May he keep you in the wonderful and only name that's saving, which is the name of Jesus. God bless.